I want to give you a healthy reminder this morning or maybe a mindset shift or maybe it's an an epiphany where where something of the nature of heaven just enters your life and you think, okay, there there is worth living now. Because I want to tell you, there, there is so many reasons to keep living, so many reasons to keep pushing into what God has for you, uh, not just for you individual, but also, as I've said earlier, for you and those people around you. The greatest thing you can do is be strong and courageous. The greatest thing you can do is actually humble yourself and realize your need for our Almighty God. Starts with humility, starts with humbling yourself. Do you know you're not as good as you think you are? I know, right? I was going to say tell your neighbor, but that's not, that's not good. <laughs> You're not as good as you think you are. That's not a level of pulling yourself down. It's an, an, it's an acknowledgement that God is greater than anything that we can come up with. How many have had a good idea? Like you've had a good idea and it's worked. But how many have had a God idea that's just blown up? That it's just like there is no other explanation other than God's hand is upon this thing. You know, our church is like that. There's no other explanation other than God is at work in this place. The, The reason that you and I have conversations, the reason that we connect with one another is because there's a God in heaven. Because in other, any other setting, unless we're on the golf course, we will literally not be really that much unless we're family. Really? I've got a ball. Thanks, Matt. Is it that bad already? Where do I put it now? Maybe it's because I'm excited. There it is. Whoa. Something in that water. Um, but I want to take you to a, a passage of Scripture this morning. Um, The first scripture I sort of uh, wanted to intro you with was Isaiah chapter 40, verse 8. This scripture during the week popped out to me as the the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God stands forever. Like that in itself explains itself, that, that things around us are just temporary. Things around us will constantly fade away, but it's the Word of God. It's the presence of God. It's the active Word of God, the Holy Spirit that's alive in us that lasts forever. And so our, our human bodies aren't going to last forever, but the Word of God is going to last forever. The Word of God that has gone through generations to, uh, before us is going to continue to go in generations to come. Although our legacy might not last long, the Word of God will continue to last forever. And I wanted to remind you that the grass withers and the flower fades, but the Word of God stands forever. Let's, let's put our faith and our trust in something that's lasting. Let's put our faith, our love, our hope in something that's lasting rather than just a building that's going to fall apart, uh, 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 whatever, a job that is going to end one day because you'll retire. There's, there's all these things that we can put our hope in, but what if that thing fails us? What if the people around us are the people that we put our faith in, our love in, and they let us down? Then what? It's, it's important that our foundation comes back to the Word of God, the Word of God that locates us right where we are. It pierces through bone and marrow. It literally separates the, the truth from what's false. And sometimes we don't know what's truth and what's false because we haven't actually opened His Word for a while. And we're, we're starting to lose our foundation. It's starting to get a little bit shaky, but we need to continue to, to foundation our lives, if that's a word, foundation our lives on the Word of God. How strong is your foundation? You know, I, I'm on site quite often and I've got hope and and faith that the foundations that the builders have laid when they go to put the walls up and put the roof above my head when I'm putting a kitchen in, that I've got faith that they've put the foundations right, that while I'm in that building, it's not going to fall on my head. I've never met the people usually that have put that in, but I've got faith that they know what they're doing. You know, greater than that, I've got faith in God that His foundation is set for my life and that anything that God decides to build on top of my life is not going to fall over. Every relationship from a young age, I knew that I was going to have a godly relationship. Why? Because I put myself first, put God first. And, and Tere wasn't a Christian in her early days. I know, right? What? <clears throat> 
And there's been things that we've had to work through, but I knew for myself that I was going to have a godly family. I was going to grow up kids that were going to be God-fearing kids, that they're going to be the next ones that are going to help change and shape the community that we live in, the world that we live in today. Why? Because I set it as a foundation that the Word of God, as we set our lives, a foundation on the Word of God and what He said, what has God promised you? Maybe you haven't seen it yet. Maybe you haven't seen it come to pass. But actually, the fact that it's a foundation doesn't mean you need to see it in the, like, in the too distant future that you have to think, oh, I wonder if lately it's going to fall apart. No, it's a foundation. It's there set in our lives. It's set in concrete, set in stone. <clears throat> what, is, what is the promises that God has spoken to you? And what is the foundation you live by? Is it from the Word of God? Do you open the Word of God to, to, to really set that foundation? Because how many know the world around us is falling apart? You don't have to look very far to see that things around us are falling apart. And if the Christians themselves are falling apart, then we've got nothing to really go off as well. If our foundations aren't set, we're just like everyone else. Can I encourage you as an individual, as a, as a follower of, of God, get your foundation right. It's not about... Being a rock star, it's not about, you know, using your gifts and talents if you don't have that character, if you don't have that foundation that is set and solidified by the Word of God because, you know, gift and talent will get you so far, but it's character that will actually sustain you in spaces. You could run a business, you could get it to where you want it and always dreamed it to be, but if your character doesn't sustain you there, and you're, you're lasting there just because you want the money, just because you want the fame. Man, it's going to fall apart at some point. And guess what? It's going to be pretty ugly. Because the more influence you got, the more mess it's going to get around. But then the danger of that is being a Christian and not having any influence. Oh, I don't really want to lead anything. I don't really want to push out too far because I don't want to hurt people if I fall. I've got a tendency to let my sinful nature take over and I don't want to hurt people, so I'll just stay and just be myself and be a Christian for myself. But actually, the Great Commission is about going and making disciples. So we're not fulfilling all that God has for us unless we're actually actively chatting to people about what God is doing. I love working in a secular environment because I get to have conversations with people that are outside. When I turn up to site... Many people don't know I'm a pastor, not because of the way I look or anything like that. It's just that I don't have a white collar, which is what everyone thinks. <clears throat> everyone's picture when I turn up to site is that church is a funeral. You turn up, you sit in the pews, you sing hymns, you hear some boring speech, and then you go home and nothing changed. And I've taken it on myself to, to get in those environments and have conversations and it's, it's taken a little bit to have the confidence to be like, because I've flipped it on people now. You may have heard it before. It's like, they like, what? You go to church? My now response is, what? You don't go to church? Because they're the ones that are weird now. I'm not the weird one. Like, I, I start it. I'm like, what? If I, often I'll see a guy, a builder on site, tattoos everywhere, swearing. And I'm like, hey, what church do you go to? Because... Because it starts a conversation, but their, their whole mindset is I've got to be an old guy with a, you know, a vicar and I've got to just be boring. And I often flip things, conversations like that, just to challenge their mindsets. Like often that is just planting a seed in someone's life. You know, I see it the way that I am as a pastor. I'm just here to plant seeds. I may not ever see the tree that gets to be, um, you know, develop the, the fruit that gets to de be developed in someone's life, but I'm here to plant the seed. Sometimes we don't plant the seed because we're not going to be the ones to bear the fruit. Can I encourage you, plant the seed regardless if you see the fruit or not. My, my grandma was a praying woman, and I'm the fruit of what what she had prayed so many years. My mum as well. I used to get up for my paper run at 6 a.m. and I could hear her praying because I, I was underneath their bedroom. We had a two-story uh, two house. 
Yeah, no, I wasn't in the basement. It's fine. <clears throat> we had a two-bedroom house, and, and the, my parents' bedroom was above. And, and every time my alarm went off, I could hear my mom. Man, my boys are going to be great. My girls are going to be great. They're going to marry great uh, like husbands. They're going to m- marry great wives. They're gonna, you know, my mom would just pray every single morning. And, and as a teenager, I was just like, yeah, get over it, mom. Like, things will happen as it, as it does. You know, God's got a plan. Um, but don't underestimate the power of prayer. Don't underestimate, especially in this season. We couldn't gather together, but we were praying for you. We're praying that God would actually intervene in your world, that you wouldn't just feel lonely. You wouldn't feel abandoned. Maybe you couldn't see your friends and your family, but it didn't mean that God wasn't with you. The Holy Spirit is with you wherever you go. You know, I love this uh, story in Daniel chapter 3. And I'm going to read it out to you, Daniel chapter 3, verse 19 to 28. It's a story about Nebuchadnezzar being the king. And he built these statues, and everyone in the land had to bow down to these statues. But these three guys, do you know their names? Shadrach, Meshach. Yeah, and it's actually Abednego. Abednego. Everyone says Abednego, but it actually is not. <coughs> um, so if you learn anything today... Is how to say Abednego. Um, But we're picking up the story where uh, these three actually stood when everyone else was bowing down. And the the rulers of the time, they grabbed the guys and took them to Nebuchadnezzar, the king. And he, uh, we pick up in verse 19, I'm reading from the NLT version. It says, Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that uh, that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Sounds like COVID. (laughs) Sounds like the second tier of COVID. How many thought this lockdown was a little bit harder? There's there's people that I've talked to, they were like, man, this one's mentally been harder. And I I was reading this and it's like the the furnace has been turned up seven times hotter this time. And um, uh Verse 20, then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and uh, and throw them into the blazing furnace. Verse 21, so they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the uh, three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did. They replied, look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed and the fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the uh, flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 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 yep, shouted, uh, stepped out of the fire. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors, Advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them, not a hair on their head was singed, and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell of the smoke. Verse 28, then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, uh, He sent his angels to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. What a story, right? Like if, if, if anything is going to give you hope, it's a story like that. Like in the current situation or the current circumstances that not just New Zealand is in, but the world is in right now, that gives me hope that I could go through any fire, that I could go through any situation and understand that I might go in there alone, but Jesus is in there with me. God sends His protection. God sends His armies to actually be with me in the fire. And what did they say? They didn't even come out with a hair singed. Their, Their clothes weren't even smelling. 
Like, that's just insane. You can go through this period of COVID and actually come out better than you went in. You can come out with a confidence that whatever you go through, God is with you. Whatever you go through, it doesn't matter because you're not even going to smell like it. You're not even going to allow it to, to, to frustrate you. You're not even going to allow it to, to make you lose time thinking over it. How, many, how much time do we just lose by, by being worried? How much time do we lose by being frustrated? How many times do we actually be angered and we just lose time because our brains just don't work properly when we're in that state? But God has called us to be calm in the storm. He's called us to be calm within that fire because He's with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. It's quiet. Must, must mean you're listening. Where or who is your dependence on in this season? Who is your dependence on? If it's on yourself, sorry, you're going to let yourself down. If it's on me, sorry, I'm going to let you down. If it's on your peers, if it's on anyone humane, in human form, they're going to let you down, but God will never let you down. You can feel lonely because you're, you're by yourself, but you can have the attention of heaven in your lounge room, in your bathroom, wherever you are, the attention of heaven can be rested right where you are. All you need to do is call out. Call out to heaven in your despair, in your fear, in those times of being in your lows. Call out to heaven. Because God will never let you down. It's a promise from him. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He won't run away. There's nowhere in the world that you can run that is too far away from God. It's a crazy thought. Obedience. Obedience is a massive thing that we're taught as kids. You know, you're taught manners. You're taught to say please and thank you. You're taught that prayer is just grace before dinner. No. <laughs> but obedience is so much higher than just saying grace. Obedience to, to a God that has our, has, has our best interest at heart wouldn't you want to listen to him? Yes, it means you're going to run through some fire. It's going to mean you're going to have to defile the people around you. You're going to have to stand up against opposition. You imagine being around with thousands of people and then they say, cool, can you bow down to this thing? And being three people left standing. Like that takes courage. That, that is a lot of faith to actually stay standing when everyone else is probably... Hundreds of those people were Christians, but none of them wanted to stand up. Why? Because they just heated up the fire seven times hotter, and whoever stands is going to get thrown in there. So, now nah, I'm good. Like, I'm good just sitting back here and, and no one knowing I'm a Christian. Think about Peter when he denied Jesus. Someone who had been so close to him ended up just fitting in with the crowd and going, no, 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 I don't know that guy. Like, hey, aren't you the guy that was hanging out with him? No, no, it's not me. You must be mistaken. It's someone else. I don't know that man. It's easy to do, right? It's easy for us when we're not in a church setting. Any of us would stand up if I said, hey, stand up. Because it's easy in this setting. It's hard to stand up when you're in your office with 12 other people when you're on site. It's hard. But actually, that is the courage and the confidence that builds your faith that you can continue to take steps of faith that maybe it's just a half step at the start and then you're like, and God's like, yes, yeah, see, I've got you. And then maybe the next one is a giant leap going, yeah, I believe that God's got my back. That all of the angels in heaven are ready. They're ready to push me forward. You'll come up against opposition. But obedience is greater than opposition. What is God saying to you? Who is God putting in your world that they need you to have that foundation? The foundation that is going to last the distance. Thanks, Teddy. <laughs> Something as easy as doing the dishes. 
All right? How many people have done the dishes? Yeah, good. Not load the dishes, dishwasher. I'm saying do the dishes. How many know that every single day you pretty much wash the same bowl? At least one bowl, but you, you literally wash the same bowl, probably the same spoon. You're going to have to do things repetitively. It's not like, cool, I've washed that plate, never going to have to see that again. <laughs> Isn't that true? But what it comes down to is three things that you need to keep in check, that actually you need to keep these three, three things aligned with your foundation. And that foundation, again, comes from God. Your thinking, your behavior, and your feelings. Your thinking, your behavior, and your feelings. Why? Because these are the three things that are going to get us in trouble. I mean, I know we all think positively, right? Like none of us here have got an issue with bad thinking or like thinking the wrong, thinking the worst of someone even before we've even had a conversation. Like none of us are in that state. So I'm actually talking to people that aren't in this building, right? What about our behavior? Sometimes we, we can be grown adults and we're still acting like toddlers. Our behavior, we just throw the things, throw the dummy out of the cot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's our behavior it can let us down. But also our feelings. You don't feel like washing the dishes. You don't feel like, I didn't feel like pegging out the washing yesterday because it got me in trouble. I didn't pull it in. It's raining today. <laughs> <coughs> you know when you do something good and it turns out for bad? Far out. My gosh, we won't go there. That's right. What about interacting with people, the people that God has called us to? How is our thinking? How is our behavior? And how are our feelings around that? Like, why do we give up on people so easy? when God will continue out of his unconditional love, keep pouring out and pouring out and pouring out. There's, a, there's levels of discipline that we can, like there's grace. When you, when you first get a child, when they're born, look at him down there. <laughs> I'm not going to get annoyed because he just like did a poo in his nappy again because he's at that stage of life and sometimes we treat people around us like that, oh, you've just become a Christian, cool. Hey, you shouldn't be doing that. Hey, no, we've got to allow ourselves to disciple them and help sometimes change their nappies, change all the things, that, and we, we need to help them so that they can actually grow into the, the people that God has called them. When you put your hand up for salvation, doesn't mean that you're now Billy Graham and you're ready to take on the world. And, you know, you're, you're basically a little child in the kingdom of God. Sometimes as Christians, we're just too harsh. It's our, God, our job to continue to love people regardless. Let's, let's leave the judgment. Let's leave all those things to God because he's the ultimate judge. But who can you love on this week? I, I bet if you're in the fire right now, you feel like you're in the fire, that people around you are in their own fires. Sometimes we can be like, oh, can't you see I'm in my fire? They're like, I know, I'm in my fire too. <laughs> like I feel like as a pastor, I'm constantly in the fire. But the challenge is not coming out smelling like fire. The challenge is not coming out being all ratty and burnt up. And then everyone's like, whoa, where have you come from? Like you look like you're a mess. Oh, yeah, it's just the fire again. I should have called Jesus. <laughs> should have told him to come and join me in the fire. But I thought I had this one. Like I've dealt with fires before and I thought I had this one. My marriage is on the rocks and I thought I had this one, but uh, I didn't quite make it. No, because Jesus wants to be in that with you. Jesus is not just a bit on the side. He's not just the side dish that you push away because you don't want to eat the peas. He's the main. He's the main. He's the, he's the main. Like he's the T-bone steak. 
tell you. Mushroom sauce. There you go. Mushroom sauce, vegans. <coughs> With soy milk. Or you lactose intolerant people. Man, I'm not going to water down my preaching, all right? This is your choices, not mine. Come on. See, the fact is, you can look around, and every single one of us have been through a fire or currently in a fire right now. So you can't look at anyone else and go, I wish I had your life, because you've never seen what fires they've had to go through. That's why I love the on the couch segment, because you get a couple up and you think, oh, they've got it all together. They look rich. They look like they own five houses. They look blah, blah, blah. And then they get up, oh, we went through bankruptcy and we lost a child and blah, 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 blah. And you're like, oh, didn't see that coming. But then you hear the story and they, they don't smell like fire. <laughs> like they smell like joy. They smell like faith. They smell like that, that's contagious. I want to hang out with them. I want to go to dinner at their house and hear more of their story. We don't, it's not that we hide the fire and come out looking mangled and we think, oh, I've got to stay home for two days so I can scrub off the smell. That's where e-groups come into play. I bet if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had an e-group, they would have been like, yep, we're all in it together. Take 10 of us. We're all going in the fire. I wondered who, who had the initial idea. Shadrach, Meshach, or Abednego. Like who was it out of those three that was like, yo, I'm standing, I'm not, I'm not bowing. Bro, you have to bow. <laughs> Look, don't be that guy. No, nah, no, nah, stand with me. No, nah, I don't want to do that. Like who started that initial conversation? I bet they weren't all three like, yeah, we're men of faith. Like we're going to do this. They would have been like, dude, like, there's whispering going on. I bet human nature starts kicking in. Fear, doubt. Oh, dude, like, what if God doesn't come through? Oh, well. What do you mean, oh, well? Like, that means we're going to die. <laughs> like, have you ever been in that situation where you've got nothing, nothing to lose, really? Your reputation, your life, all of these things, but actually... Your faith can be with, like, stand greater than that. Just like doing the dishes, you're going to have to keep doing it. Dishes don't do themselves. I know dishwashers exist, but you've got to put the plates in there. It's no good leaving the plates on the dish, uh, on the, here's a thought, right? Yeah, here's a thought. Some of us feel like we've accomplished something because we turned the dishwasher on and we felt like we did the dishes. But the dishes are still on the bench. Like we forgot to actually pack the dishwasher. We feel like we've done the job, but actually we've only done the end result because we feel good about it. Where we've left the dishes that are dirty on the bench and God's like face palm, like, come on, man. Like, we're not doing justice by just turning up when all our dirty friends are, are still on the bench. They're still waiting for us to get involved in their world. The people in your world, the, the workmates, the family members, all those people that we're just like, oh, well, next time I'll just turn the dishwasher on and we'll just leave them out there for a bit. I'm not, telling, I'm not saying like you haven't tried, but who in your world maybe needs a little bit of attention? Not to the spit shiner like attention, but you know, they need a bit of cleaning off. That's right. As Christians, we're not called to do hard things. All right? We're called to do impossible things. Okay? You're not you're not called to do just the hard things. Because hard things you can accomplish on your own. But impossible situations, impossible situations like being thrown in a fire and coming out unscathed, that's impossible. We're called to do impossible. What fire are you in at the moment? 
What fire is, is getting on the inside? What, is, what fire are you in? Maybe it's a fire with your boss. The other thing about this is Nebuchadnezzar got, had an epiphany. The opposition turned into someone that actually saw God for who he was. The opposition, the one that was actually enforcing the punishment on them became the one that said, praise your God because you serve the one true living God. So maybe you've got a boss that is really annoying you and maybe he sounds a bit like Nebuchadnezzar. He's really hounding you. But you withstanding the fire and allowing God to be with you wherever you are could be their salvation, could be their miracle, could be their opportunity to see God in action. And so let's not, let's not brush off opportunities. Let's engage with what God is doing. Amen? Amen. So good, so good. Great, awesome. Why don't you stand to your feet? <coughs> I preached this message to myself about 10 times this week. I was on site. I was getting sick of putting in kitchens going, God, I just, I don't want to do this anymore. I, it's something I love. I love going on site, getting a plan, seeing a jigsaw puzzle <laughs> before I get to attack it. And the, the craft, craftsmanship to actually put it in and see the satisfaction on people's face of going, wow, what a great job. But greater than that, I'm just like Jesus, I'm a carpenter. (laughs) There was something in me and then God just said, maybe it's just a fire and you haven't allowed me to come in. Maybe what you're currently going through is just a temporary fire. And you thought it was bad before until the devil turned it up seven times hotter. But God would say, I'm bigger than that. I'm with you. I'm with you through everything. So why don't you just close your eyes all over this place? See, I don't know how you're feeling right now with maybe a situation that's going on, maybe a relationship breakdown, maybe work's falling apart, maybe you've lost your job because of COVID, maybe all these things could be going on in your world. Talk to God about it. One thing we say at Equippers is ministry in the hands of every believer. We're bridging the gap between the pulpit and the pew. We don't want to create a culture that everyone sees this. This is the end result, man. I just want to preach. Man, I just want, you are a preacher. You may be the only Christian in your family. You may be the only Christian at your workplace. That is your pulpit. Let your life preach. Yes, you're going to go through the fire. Yes, opposition is going to come up, but it's the obedience to the Holy Spirit. It's the obedience to a God that loves you and will never leave you. That is what gets you through. Because the grass withers and the flower fades, but the Word of God lasts forever. So I just, we're just going to sing and we're going to worship Him. And I want you to continue to just close your eyes and allow the Holy Spirit to come upon you afresh. In fire, there's a refining. See, the thing that Nebuchadnezzar put on them was the rope. And they came out all their bindings had been burnt off. See, what the enemy tries to put on you in the fire, it gets burnt off. 
what the enemy, what the lies of the enemy, what the things that have come on you from someone else will drop off. But actually God created them and what God had created remained. And so whatever the enemy has put on you, maybe it's words. Maybe it's a false identity. Maybe it's challenge. tell you right now, it's like there's a fire down here in the altar. And maybe you need to have a transaction with heaven as we sing. It's like, God, I come into this fire and I'm all bound up. I've got chains of addiction. I've got chains that are holding me back and I need freedom. Come on, the Bible says that he who the sun sets free is free indeed. Indeed. 